Welcome back, my friends. My name is Eric. This is Rome, and we're back with some more Rogue Trader. Now, it has been about three weeks since I've last recorded a game or last played this particular save. I have been playing. Uh, I've been playing a private save, and in fact, we can uh, we can take a look here, and you can see um, I've got Ethel here. Uh, Ethel, I've played for one ga one day uh, and thirteen thirty six hours versus. Um, one day and uh, seven minutes. <laughs> so I've got a little bit longer um, in in this one uh, so far. Uh, you know, an extra 13 hours, essentially. 13 and a half hours. <clears throat> but that's okay. Uh, we're here. We just jumped back in. Uh, we were still in the void ship, and it put us out to here. So uh, we're going to go with that. Uh, I've learned a few things since we've gone. I've got a couple things I want to check. Let's go ahead and go to the bridge. For instance, I have figured out where we were supposed to go um, for the uh, personal cogitator. It is not the one that's actually labeled personal cogitator uh, and happens to be in your office. Uh, no, that would make it too easy. That would that would make sense. Um, it is a different cogitator. Um, it's not labeled personal cogitator. Um, and in fact, is over here, I believe. Here we go. Yep. <clears throat> And you don't see unless you hold the tab, and then you can get that. All right. Uh, the reflections of the bridge lights are playing on the unlit vid screens of the cogitator. Next to the machine stands the hunched tech priest who bows as you approach, his body nearly folding in half. Lord Captain, the machine spirit of this mechanism slumbers. Should you wish to awaken it, use the key of your blood. All right. We'll place our hand inside the servitor's maw. I'm assuming it works exactly the same way that the one that opened up the uh, office with our, our warrant of trade is in. Servitor's... Uh, powerful jaws close around your hand with a screeching clack. You feel the cold metal pierce your skin and draw blood. The vid screens in front of you flicker rel restlessly, filling with numerical combinations. The sacred mechanism is awake and ready to receive your request, Lord Captain. All right. Um, Pascal informed me that the system has encrypted data stored inside. I wish to know its contents. Without another word, the tech priest turns to the cogitator. He raises his hands, and a prayer of binaric code pours out of his Vox device. The servo motors in the bowels of the machine grow louder, its undulating hum responding to his chant. Numerical combinations run down the screens. The machine spirit has discovered numerous critical errors. The data is damaged. The tech priest stops abruptly, and the green glow of his visor narrows. Registering an intact segment, the machine spirit has spoken. The worlds of Kiava Gama and Dargonus hold certain data repositories. The mechanism is ready to provide the rogue trader with data keys that can unlock said repositories. Uh, how do I accept these keys? It gives us some gibberish. <laughs> The gracious machine spirit is willing to transfer the data keys to the head of House von Valencius by means of Electu, a, a hypodermic tattoo augment. If you are ready to accept the keys, place your hand inside the servitor's mouth. Deep within the servitor's dark gullet, unseen, burning hot needles pierce your wrist. But the sharp pain only lasts a moment. The Electu that has been planted inside your wrist should be enough to open the repository doors. Okay, I need to know more about the caches. Okay. Some more computer gibberish. The Omnissiah favors you. The machine spirit is willing to commence the calculation procedure that should re that could restore the lost data. All right, so tech use zero. Pascal's got a 95, so we're going to get a 95. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll store each of them. Restore the data on the cache located on Dargonus. Succeeded. The data has been restored, but it is only a single phrase. Litanies of the motive force. That is all the sacred mechanism was able to salvage. I'm going to write that down. Uh, do I have a pen? I don't know if we need it or not, but uh, I think maybe we do. Litanies. The motive force. Okay. And on Kiavagama, let's try this again. Oh, I should probably write Dargonus, huh?
Blessed are the omnicized deeds. The ro- uh, repository on Kyavagama has a security system guarding it. The machine spirit has discovered a code which will allow you to disable the defenses. Hmm. Security system. I'll just put a little question mark there. Okay. What data repositories? Uh, that remains hidden. The encrypted data bank belonged to the esteemed Theodora von Valencia. She was the only one who could have known about these repositories. Perhaps the former Ingenseer Prime also could have known. Omnisci accept his code. If I were to propose a hypothesis, it would be more prudent of a figure as eminent as rogue trader to store classified data on a rece- in receptacles most secure. Uh, do we know how the ship was able to start a warp engine? The Engine Seer Prime spends hours pursuing the quest for knowledge in hopes of comprehending the nar- nature of said miracle. May the Omnisci's grace guide him on his journey. There is no doubt that it was a miracle sent by the Omnisci as a manifestation of his will, yet the Engine Engineer Prime managed per- uh, to perceive some logical connection within the streams of data. I'm not privy to this connection, but the Engineer Engine Seer Prime will surely share this newly discovered knowledge with you in a detailed report. All right. There we go. <clears throat> Next thing I want to talk about. I wanted to hide our head, and I figured out how to do that. We have our outfit settings here, and I can show the helmet, and I can turn it off, and now we can see our spectacular wig. We can also turn off a backpack. This seems to be a little less inconsistent as to what it considers a backpack and what it doesn't. You can see here it's not really turning anything on or off. Um, we do have something there. Uh, we'll leave it off for now. Uh, and so there we go. And we can set this individually. Uh, for each of our characters. So we can come in here and make sure none of them, you know, have a helmet on or off. You know, whoever you want. Um, you know, maybe some of them we want to see the, the cool helmet. Let's see. Like, maybe, for instance, we would like your helmet to be on. Because it's cool. Um, we could go with that. I kind of like him with this full armor and everything on, though. So I think I'm going to leave him like that. Uh, we do have a couple level ups here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. We got two ranks for Heinrichs. Um, we what? Win assassin with him? Yes, assassin. All right. So, uh, Death Whisper I found is really, really good. Uh, Elusive Shadow. I think I'd like to try it, but I haven't played with it yet. It makes you uh, the lowest priority target, so nobody wants to go after you, and gives you some move through and stuff. I don't know. <clears throat> it would probably be good for him because I think he would be a good melee assassin. And I kind of want to build towards that, although mostly he's there for healing, so I don't know how much we're going to spend on that. Uh, so there's that. He also has Shield of the Emperor, which we could do, which is which is pretty good as well. I'm going to start with Death Whisper. I think I'm going to do um, Dance Macabre's another one where they dash in a straight line. Uh, and that does some sort of attack. I don't know what, but I know it, it doesn't really look like it there. It says they dash in a line. Uh straight line for up to one plus their agility bonus divided by two. So our agility bonus is four. So two cells suffering our weapon skill bonus, less damage from attacks of opportunity. So we do still take attacks of opportunity, but we take a little bit less and gaining a percent dodge against enemies turn. If the assassin hasn't dashed through any enemies at the end of their turn, they gain a bonus to their cover efficiency. But see, it's a, it's just a movement, but later on there's an ability that says when you do the Dance Macabre, you get something. And, you know, it's a Dance Macabre, a charge, or something else. So I don't know, but let's go ahead and take Death Whisper first, because that's a really good one. Um, I like that. So let's see, is it this one? Enemy suffers a critical hit from new opening. Each use of aim. on. I'm going to do a lot of that, probably. I, I have really liked that. Whenever an enemy assassin attacks enemies at full wounds... We gain more dodge, more dodge reduction. First assassin ability costs zero. Perfect opening, we gain lethality. Remember our lethality is based on our dodge or our dodge mitigation. I think it'll be so to be a 70%. Um, so we get a 70% chance to deal 5% of its max wounds more damage if we hit with an opening. Uh, and whenever the assassin attacks an enemy with a single target attack reduces the target's armor and dodge. That's not too bad either. Uh, I'm wondering if I can find this one. I 
I don't remember what it's called, unfortunately. Whenever an assassin hits a target with an, with an attack that has a 100 lethality or greater for the first time in a round, we regain... That could be really good, because I think it's easy enough to get 100 dodge. And see right here, every successful dodge gets us more damage there based on our lethality. Um, hmm. I don't know if I can find that thing. Your skills. Oh. We should go with this. <laughs> that answers that. That's what we should go with regardless. Uh, I'll see if I can figure out where the heck that other one is. Um, as we go through stuff. But I think for now, we want we want the higher psi rating regardless. Um, that's, that's definitely the thing we want for him. All right. And we've got one rank here. Uh, do we have any warpy stuff we want to do? So far, I've got enemies suffered... Get a 10% damage from warp damage. And I've taken that already, right? Yep. The course traveled. Uses a navigator power that hasn't been used. We get plus two perception. I'm not sure how useful that is. Uh, and the line of sight has a... Every enemy has its dodge and hit reduced by the navigator's perception bonus. Right now that's a five. So that's an essentially 10% negative to... You know what? I'm going to go for that. That seems pretty decent. Okay. Anybody else have one? No. What do you got going on? Forewarning. Okay. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about that I figured out is if we come over here and we talk to High Factotum Janus Danrock. Greetings, your lordship. Janus Danrock at your service. Uh, Vigorous inform me about a problem with the servitors. We'll get to that in a second. Have you heard the name the Fiery Reckoning? From what I can tell, it's a void ship of some sort. Uh, I'm afraid it's not immediately familiar to me, your lordship. Please allow me a moment. Hmm. I say House von Valencius did indeed sign a contract with the owners of a vessel with a designation Fiery Reckoning. There are transactions, records of the ship picking up cargo from Kiavagama. Well, this is odd. The data log ends there. Apparently, the ship had some interactions with one of the workshops on your industrial world. I beg your pardon, your lordship, but that is the extent of the assistance I can provide you in regard to this particular matter. Okay. Uh... One thing we can do here, we can go here and we can ask about people who buy our plunder. Um, and he can tell us a little bit about each of these. Uh, and I'm not going to read each of these. I'll click on them if you'd like to stop and pause. I think realistically we understand most of this information at this point. Uh, so just reading it again is not really that huge a deal. We'll just kind of click our way. Um, so once we, we've done that, we can go ahead and talk about shipping and transportation. And from here, we can go ahead and we can actually do the trade. We don't have to find the person on the, the base or the station or whatever. We don't have to go to Footfall if we want to trade with Caspolica. We can come right here. We can set it up. And we can say, I would like to get a little bit more reputation. And we need, what, an extra 500? We can go ahead and show tradables. We can get an extra two grand if we want to. I'm going to clear section. I'm going to hide untradable. And let's go ahead and... Uh, We'll add, they like heretic, that gets us 500. That'd take us to 6750. Bam, there we go, we've got another level. So in theory, we could trade for more, did we not get there? Yeah, we're level one now. So in theory, we could trade for these now. Uh, if we wanted to, uh, we do not have the, we've only got a profit factor of 17 at the moment though. So, um, so there's that, so we can go ahead and do that. Uh, who else do we... Drusians, we can go ahead. We're close to the next level on that. Let's go ahead and reputation. Let's hide untraceable. And they just need, what, an extra 100? So we could just do like an armor kit or something along those lines, 150. That gets us up to another level of them. And again, we don't have the faction to do much with that. We do have this enforcer helmet. Uh, targets of taunting suffer penalty to their willpower tests against that ability. That's not too bad. Uh, not needed at the moment. So we can do that from from this uh, while talking to this gentleman. The other thing we can do is we can go to here, uh, like to replace the painting. Yeah, we'll hang my portrait. That that sounds like a good idea. We don't. We're we're, we're tired of looking at that one. So we can come here and we can say I wish to bolster my retinue with skilled fighters. 
and he's going to say, okay, there's people in the, st in the crew, we can do that, and we can come here, and we can create new characters. So if we don't want to take the storyline characters with us, maybe we want to be heretical. We want to be super heretical, and we just want to make sure there's not always people there always complaining about it. We can go ahead and we can do that. We can come here, we can create our own, all our characters, we can create what we want, and we can add them to the party all day long. Um, close the interface. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, no, whoops, that is what I wanted. Um, so we could do that. Oh, for instance, maybe we want to do a channel member playthrough where all we add all of our channel members. Uh, we could do that. We come in here and everybody could have a little bit of say in how their character's created. Maybe give me an idea of the direction they want that character to go. And we could create those characters and we could run around with them instead of the, the storyline characters. Uh, and the other thing is you can go to my retinue and I are in need of training. And at this point, what you can do is you can actually pick a character and you can see there's a cost here. I'm not going to do it right now, but I can completely retrain my character from scratch. It's going to be a complete wipe of all my skills and abilities, and I go ahead and re-add those in. So for instance, maybe maybe I really want to be a heavy weapons expert, but we don't have any heavy, heavy weapons early. I want to make sure that I have the skills I need to use that heavy weapon when we find it. So I end up dumping a bunch of points into something I can't use that doesn't benefit me at all early on. What I can do is I can build my character based upon what I have and what I can use right now. And when I find that heavy weapon, I can come back here to the high factum and do this change. It's going to charge me a fee right now. It's zero, but eventually it will start counting up. I did a bunch of them on my other save and it never went higher than one, but this is our profit factor. So we're at 17 right now. It'll cost me at this point zero, but eventually it'll cost me uh, a portion of this profit factor. Uh, and so I could then retrain my character, take those high weapon, high power weapon skills that I needed and move on. So you can retrain any character you want anytime by coming here and redoing that. Potentially there's a cost at some point, um, but initially the first one's zero. And I, I don't know how many of them are, um, are zero there. Let's go ahead and do a quick F5 real quick. Um, and as long as we're talking, let's see what else uh, I'm going to show, not show completed quests. Uh, let's come down here to... Companion quests. Oh, my light just turned out. Uh, let's turn on this one. Rather than find a battery. Is that okay? It's a little... Sh uh, it's a little shadowy. I think we'll be okay. We can live with that. Um, we need to talk to Argenta. We need to bring Heinrichs to Kiavagama. And... We should talk to Jai. Okay. Contract-wise. Now that we're out, we can do contracts. I don't remember if we talked about this or not, but we'll talk about it right now. If I get these items, and you can see right now, I do not have any Xenotech. If I had two Xenotech, I could trade that for a profit factor of three. We can come here. I have five Plasteel, so I can, in fact, change that for a profit factor of three right now. We can complete that one. We can come down here. I do not have five Promethium, but I could get another three. So that's nice because... Um, whoops. Uh, no, it can go away. We also have our rumors here. These are all the different things that we've heard um, that we can go looking for. Maybe it'll say, hey, there may be a crash ship on an ocean world, or, uh, you know, there's people out making whatever. Um, we can go ahead and do all of that sort of stuff, right? And it's going to keep track of all that here on top of our normal quests. Now that we've got a little bit more profit factor, though, what we can do is we can come back here and talk to the high factotum. And we can come down to, I'd like to order shipping and receiving. Uh, and now we can kind of take a look. See if there's anything else that we could get that might be useful. A militant's cloak. Uh, first melee attack in combat can't be parried or dodged. Ooh, that could be pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I don't know if we're going to use it or not, but looks good to me. Uh, the explorators. Now we can get this target designator. Uh, hits an enemy with a dead eye. It applies, reduces the enemy's deflection by one and employs an exploit. Okay, that seems like that could be useful for us, potentially. Um, cast Balika. Uh, did not open anything new for us there, but I'm going to go ahead and grab the rest of these med kits. Because why not? And Fellowship, we can get a couple more things. We got this Navy Swashbuckler. 10% parry reduction, 5% armor penetration. Uh, we'll grab it. I don't know that I have a use for that one at the moment. Uh, more strength, more weapon skill. Minimum, and then we lose... <clears throat> excuse me, willpower. Um, I don't think I need that. I'm not really doing a lot of the, the drug stuff. 
So let's see. Who would we like to give that to? You are going fairly mealy. Uh, let's go to here. Can't dodge our first one. Doesn't seem too bad. Uh, and where's our other big melee character? He gets 15 armor against warp damage. I think we do this. Uh, so it's just he's gonna hit he's gonna hit things a little bit harder. There we go. And you are more or less our sniper at the moment, or one of. So we could look here. We've got a bonus to awareness. Um, that's gonna apply a de uh, reduces their deflection by one until the end of combat. And we can stack that three times. So in theory, if it's a big, crazy boss type level, we could knock its deflection down by three. Um, we're gonna give up a little bit of awareness for that. Or, uh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all in. So, on our dead eye shots, we're gonna get more critical hit chance. We're gonna do just more damage anyway. Then we're gonna get a more critical hit chance than the dead eye in the single shots. And then this will also lower that that deflection and add exploitation. Um, gloves of endurance. We've got the sniper gloves already. Um, that's okay. Uh, boots. Nope. That we just took off. More Medicaid. Oh, uh, where are... Where is our medic? You are more or less our medic at this point. Let's go ahead and give you that. Persuasion. I think really you're our persuader, right? Yeah, so let's go ahead and we'll take those gloves of persuasion off of you. Uh, would you rather have these... Sure, why not? Uh, wherever where gets an injury. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and you're our persuader at the moment, so let's go ahead and give you that. Uh, what's your awareness? Not great. But what else am I going to give you, you know? Mm. What type of cape do you have? Because being immune to burning might be good. I don't have a flamer on you at the moment, so it's not as big a deal. Uh, where is Heinrichs? What type of cloak do you have? Five less ten. Let's go with this. Yeah. We'll work on we'll work on that dodge. Like I said, there's a lot of ways to work on that dodge. So we can kind of pay attention to that. Uh applies a minus ten penalty to perception for all attacks made against the wear and to all enemies. In a two well, that doesn't sound terrible. More logic, more commerce, and go with this. Wait, did I not give you that? That gets us lower Imperium. 15 commerce wouldn't be bad either, but our commerce is already pretty good. All right. Uh, armor. Have any crazy weapons? I don't remember what we have. I'm going to assume the rest of that looks good. Okay. So, we need to go talk to... Hold on, let's just go M. And we can right-click here, and it will automatically move us there, and then we'll move the camera down. And we can talk to Argenta real quick, because we need to talk to her. Uh, I'm waiting for you to tell me about your past and explain the strange words of the cultist on footfall. Yes, I'm ready. I, I would ask only one thing of you, rogue trader. If I may... I would like to see the chamber of the sacred warrant and kneel before the relic touched by the emperor himself. A difficult conversation lies ahead of us, and I wish to pray by the relic before I lay my soul bare. Of course. She nods gratefully. And we'll get a loading screen. I'm going to change my light bulb real quick here, or the battery. We'll be right back. Argenta drops to her knees, her hands making the sign to the Aquila. Her eyes are locked on the sweeping signature on the warrant. A seemingly mundane thing, merely a flourish on a piece of paper, unless one knows whose hand left that mark, and whose blood is on that paper. If thou seest a flaw in me, smite me. If thou knowest a fall of mine, burn me. With flames of fury and righteousness, but if thou seekst a light in me, grace me. If thou hearest a plea of mine, bless me with the wrath of fury and of righteousness. 
Argenta's voice is sonor- sonorous, as if made for singing hymns and prayers, but right now she cannot seem to catch her breath, so overwhelmed with emotion is she. For I breathe by the will of thine, for I live by the law of thine. I carry thy word, O Emperor, I bring solace to the servants of thine, and ruin to foes of thine, a fate of terror and righteousness. Upon finishing, she closes her eyes and remains silent for a long time with her head raised high. Slowly, like the first licks of flame in a campfire, a smile blossoms on her lips. When Argenta finally opens her eyes, they are light with uncanny resolution. Rogue trader, we need to talk, or rather, I need to tell you something, the truth, the truth about how I ended up on Theodora von Valencia's ship and how the cultists we encountered on Footfall. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've played through this section of the game as part of the alpha, and I've played part of this, like I said, about 13 hours ahead of this in my own private save. I have not gotten this before. Um, So I'm interested. Please understand, I couldn't trust you before. I'll tell you my story, and you'll see why. I'll start at the beginning. It's easier to piece everything together that way. Upon arriving in the expanse and on footfall, I found no purpose there. Only torment. I wasn't needed. The reliquary I'd been assigned to safeguard was already well protected by Reverend Hieronymus's mission. And no one was even trying to defile it. For all its lawlessness, footfall respects the worship of the emperor. That was when Lady Theodora, head of your dynasty, appeared. She became an agent of divine will in a way. Argenta falters, searching for the words. It was from her that I learned about a planet recently discovered by her scouts, Solus Prime. For a rogue trader, the planet was of little interest, a feral world away from convenient warp routes. But for me, for me, learning of its existence was a revelation. Ah, please continue. The description of Solus Prime was familiar to me. It seemed very similar to a world from an ancient legend. The legend of Saint Argenta and her ship. Her voice grows reverent. Reverent? Reverent. Argenta, the living saint. She is my patroness, the order named at me the order named me after her. She died millennia ago, when heretics caused her ship to fall from the skies. But even those blasphemers could not touch Argenta's ha- ashes or her holy relic, the one star. For the fallen ship, which now served as the resting place for the saint's remains, would only allow the truly righteous to enter. All others would meet their, fi- their death. <clears throat> imagine when I felt when this flash imagine what I felt when this flash of insight came upon me the world where Saint Argenta's ship fell was merely a vague legend no one knew its actual whereabouts and suddenly I myself named after the saint came across this information I realized at that moment that it was important that I must journey to the planet and find the ship and so I asked Reverend Hieronymus to let me go for a time on a personal pilgrimage I boarded Theodore's ship and demanded passage to the newly discovered planet Salus Prime. Why did you keep your supposition from Reverend Hieronymus? Surely he could have helped you with the search for the ship and the saint's remains. I couldn't just come out and tell him. It was a portent revealed to me personally. Can't you see? I told Reverend Hieronymus the honest truth, that I was going on a personal pilgrimage to embolden my spirit. It really was a pilgrimage. It was as if Saint Argenta herself had shown me the way, commanding me to undertake this trial. If I had found the ship and set foot on its decks, I would lay. I, if I had laid my hand on her remains and the relic, it would have been a sign that I truly had been blessed with the saint's favor. Uh, driven by hubris, it's understandable, irresponsible of you. Um. I'm going to go with this one. It's understandable. Searching for your destiny, for your place in the world, is a special matter. A personal one. You either succeed at it, or you don't. Argenta looks at you somewhat surprised. I thought I had been called. That finding the ship was my destiny. My place in the world? Perhaps. Perhaps there's something to that. You mentioned something called the One Star. What is it? Apologies. I got so carried away I forgot to explain. The one star is a relic kept by Saint Argenta. I belong to the order Pronatus, and we attach particular significance to holy relics. The one star is one of the lost relics of the past, so mysterious that no one even knows what it is exactly. Argenta's hagio- hagiography? I screwed that up. I apologize. At times called it a banner. 
or a set of armor or a blessed chain sword. One thing is certain, it is a beacon of righteousness, and it was lost with Argenta's death. I imagine Theodora was thrilled with the prospect. Lady Theodora lent her assistance. It was her intention to visit the newly discovered world, and she took me with her. What happened next? Defeat. The ship's augers failed to detect anything of note during orbital scanning. I was expecting this, though. According to the legend, the ship can conceal itself from the naked eye, and only a pilgrim guided by a pure heart can find it. What I didn't expect was an ambush waiting for us on the planet. I landed there with a small unit provided by Theodora. I knew St. Argenta's hagiography by heart. I knew all the legends about her. I followed their obscure clues, the descriptions of mountains and rivers from millennial tales, and I was certain that I had found a way to the ship. And that's when we were attacked. The words we heard in the heretic shrine on footfall. Something about the ways, doors, pleas addressed to the same lord, the edge of daybreak. Argenta is shaking with disgust. They were the same words as those spoken by the cultists who attacked us on Salus Prime. My whole unit perished. All those honest, brave people I'd led in search of the relic. It was only by a miracle that I didn't perish along with them. I didn't connect these events at first. The cultists on Footfall, the cultists on Salus Prime, the cultists attacking the ship and Kunrad's betrayal. But what if all the links are the same chain? What if they've long since infiltrated the ranks of Von Valencia's servants? What if I, I led those heretics to the sacred planet in my search? Um, I'm going to say the one who has the answer is Kunrad escaped. Oh yes, and I sincerely hope that we will meet him again. That serpent needs to answer a few questions before he is plunged into cleansing flame. Uh, so how did you manage to escape? I have my nose itches. Theodore's people received the distress call, came to my rescue, and brought me aboard the ship. I barely remember what happened. When they arrived, I was already severely wounded. Fighting back with whatever remained in my strength, I think I shouted that we had to go after them, but they didn't listen. They took me to the shuttle and pulled out. After that, it's all blackness. When I came to, we were already in the middle of a warp jump. Theodora had urgent matters to take care of, and she decided she could clean the planet out at a later time. And that's why you didn't trust me before? Yes, rogue trader. I saw with my own eyes how a member of the family showed his true colors as a servant to the arch enemy. I had already suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of cultists, and I was afraid of another betrayal. I couldn't be forthright with you, so I studied you, looking for seeds of corruption or the light of righteousness. So to clarify, you were wounded, so you never found the ship. Is that right? Yes. I rushed to Theodore the moment I could walk again, and I insisted on going back to Silas Prime to defend the relic from the heretics. But I was told that the warp had destroyed the old route to the planet, and that plotting a new one would take a great deal of time and effort. As if there could be anything more important than protecting the faith and hunting down servants of the arch enemy. In any event, the route was lost, and all knowledge of it died in the attack of the ship along with the old navigator. And now we have a new lead. The data that we collected in the cultist shrine on footfall. I don't care what the reprobate we executed said. There must be a way to track them down. Tell me, rogue trader, will you help me in this undertaking? Will you help me find the great relic and return it to the people of the Imperium? Um, all right. Nothing I wouldn't do. If it's important, searching for ancient ships is exciting. It's my duty to help you. Um, let's go for... If the accursed final dawn is involved again, it is my duty to help you. That cult must be reduced to ashes throughout the entire Coronas expanse. She'll like that. Walks up and places her hand on your shoulder. So be it, rogue trader. As I stand here before the warrant, the embodiment of the emperor's will marked by his own hand, I vow that I will not relent until the holy relic has been returned and the heretics punished. And may the light be with us both on this path. All right. There we go advance the story a little bit further. Let's see if we can fly somewhere, though. One of the things I have enjoyed in the additional 13 or so hours of playtime, actually a little bit farther than that because I don't have to stop and read everything like this. I can fly through it a lot faster. Um, I have enjoyed... I do enjoy the ship combat. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. We do need to talk to uh, Jai at some point, too, or Jay, or however you want to say her name. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go here. We'll see. We've got some more scans we can do. We're going to be a little bit uh, stingy with our, uh, our extractums. Uh, I've had problems. Uh, I found a lot more than I have extractums for. So if we don't have, I don't know, 
three or four or something. We're not gonna we're not gonna do a bunch of extractums for like two plaz steel, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, I found lots of plaz steel. We're gonna go for bigger ones, five, sevens, that sort of stuff. Uh, we'll just have to kind of see how it goes. Uh, how much is that? Oh, whoops, cancel. Five provisions probably is enough. We'll grab that. Five, I think, is enough to, to use one on. Uh, what do we get? Some regular trade goods and some grenades and some heal kits. I am good with that. All right. So that is the entire system there. Let us go ahead. We need to... Oh, we got a little bit of repair. Let's go ahead and repair that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the overall map and see what we got going on there. Take a quick drink. Chart new routes. All right. Do we see her Salus Prime listed anywhere? We do not. We do have something up here. So that's got to be Janus right there. They're giving us a little deal to let us know. Now, one of the things I like to do is between my own major worlds, I like to use these points to create a jump point between them. So we can use those to upgrade the safety of a jump point. Green's already safe. Yellow's a minor, orange slightly worse, red's more. So if we were to go from here to here right now, it'd be a really bad one. It takes about three to three of these to create a jump, and then three more to knock it down to green, right? So one to knock it down to orange, two to knock it down to yellow. So it would take six to go from here to here. Now we could, we've already got a red one here. We could knock this one down and knock that down. It'd take us a couple jumps, um, rather than just one, but we could make them safer for cheaper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to jump because we don't want to do that. We're already at 38 minutes. We're going to jump over here to this one. We see that they're, uh, and we're just going to do a regular. So we could knock for one, we could make it a safe jump. We're going to just go with it as a yellow jump. Call it a day. Hope we do okay. Let's go ahead. Uh, we've already explored that one. Uh, I'm an idiot, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I'm usually an idiot, so that's, that's fine. Um, that one's already scanned though. So let's go back to here. Permission to report, Lord Captain. I keep receiving messages about strange behaviors in certain ship systems. All decks report uncontrollable opening and closing of doors, gates, and airlocks. They behave erratically and do not obey the operator's commands. Regrettably, this has led to casualties among the crew. The tech spirits have explained these phenomena are being caused by the machine spirits' irascibility and have spent hours chanting litanies to soothe the anger. Unfortunately, many crew members are badly injured before the prayers could stabilize the systems. Let's go back to here real quick. Uh, there was a couple of things I want to do. One is we could, I believe, ask about that. Uh, I'm not sure who we ask about it to, um, but we'll we'll check. Um, one of the tech priests, uh, and then there's another one I would like to talk to the high factotum about that we we skipped um, a second ago. So let's go. Um, All right. Uh, do you know anything about the malfunctioning servitors on the ship? Information about the incidents has been detected in the catalog. The incidents have been acknowledged as insignificant. A technical inquiry has established that the most statistically likely cause of the errors was a transgression of sacrilegious negligence during the lobotomizing rite. This disgraceful act of malfeasance has allowed shadows of the servitor's thoughts and recollections to survive in the depths of his mind, which ought to be dedicated to service alone. As a ship's engine seer, I accept the results of the technical inquiry. As a learned servant of the Omnissiah, I question its findings. The patterns of the malfunctions form a more complex picture than can be discerned by those of lower ranks. For this reason, instructions have been issued across the ship to report any new incidents to me personally. All right. Strange messages of impairing the ship's log. What do you know about this? Consequence of the discontent of the ship's machine spirits. I recommend. 
implement a procedure of location of the honored spirits for the glory of the Omnissiah and the steel mm -hmm. angels sent by him. All right. May your labors be effective and fruitful. All right, next thing I want to do is come down here because I think we can do this here. Activate the control panel. No failures detected. Okay. Oh, maybe something's happening. All right, we got to pray about it. We got our little sensor there with our, our smoke. Uh-oh, something happened. More than I expected. Oh, nothing. We just reloaded it. Okay. Next thing I would like to do then, we're going to come over here. Search Technocrat. There he is. High Factotum. That's who I want. All right. Pleasure to see you, Lord Captain. How may I be of assistance? Virgis has informed me about a problem with the servitors. What happened? You see, your lord, war your lordship, the ship's servitors have been malfunctioning of late. They violate protocols, interrupt their tasks, observe crew members for long periods of times, and move erratically with no meaning or purpose. Had it been a routinely technical fault, I would have decided the fate of these servitors myself, but I deemed it necessary to notify you. I do not wish to hide such irregularities from the lord captain. If you wish to observe the servitors' unusual behavior before you decide their fate, this can be arranged. The majority of the defective units have been delivered to one of the storage compartments pending your decision. Pascal Hahnemann expressed a desire to be present during the inspection. Should it be carried out, I suppose the expertise of the esteemed Magos may come in handy. <sighs> mm. All right, let's take a look at him. As you wish, Your Lordship. Would you like the engine seer prime to accompany? Uh, sure, why not? As Your Lordship commands. All right, when His Lordship arrived at the scene, he found the servitors in the same position that they had assumed after they had been corralled into the bay, all standing in a long spiraling line and facing the center of the strange formation. The moment His Lordship crossed the threshold of the bay gate, their bodies jerked into motion. All as one, as if obeying a command, the servitors turned to face the Lord Captain. The technomats taxed with overseeing the defective units even reached for their weapons, but then the servitors just went still. I'm sorry. But then the servitors went still just as abruptly, staring at his lordship with vacant eyes. All present held their breath. Disturbed by this sight, we waited for the lord captain to speak. His lordship, Abner von Valencius. Um. Let us go. Let's take several steps towards them. Immediately, the servitors, each and every one of them, stepped toward the lord captain in perfect unison. They mimicked his movements with frightening precision. The rogue trader halted in place, and after a moment's thought, waved his hand, and the servitors, just as synchronously, sure, we'll go with that pronunciation, repeated that gesture as well. When the Lord Captain looked quizzically to the technomats, so did the servitors, as if mocking him. Whatever the Lord Captain did, be it an incline of the head, a wave of the hand, or a step to the side, the defective units repeated without a moment's delay or hesitation, like grotesque marionettes controlled by an unseen puppeteer. We observed this mine unfold in distressed bafflement for nearly a minute until the servitors finally came to a stop. Not sensing any threat from them, the rogue trader approached with confidence. The Lord Captain examined the servitors. As High Factotum, it was I who prompted the entire inspection, and thus it was my duty to follow the Lord Captain. As we stepped closer, we noticed a fascinating irreg irregularity. The servitors' pupils, normally still, were shaking wildly. Their bulging veins were pulsating under the copper collars inscribed with their past offensive offenses. It was as if the mindless half-machines were locked in a perpetual state of extreme tension. A visibly shaken technomat behind us proposed that the human souls had awakened within the servitors' bodies after a long slumber deep within their lobotomized brains. Formally bereft of their intelligence, they had attained awareness, feeling, and understanding. After a pause, the technomat added that the servitors used to function properly and that no one had been able to explain the change in behavior. His gaze still trained on the motionless but animate half-machines and half-people. The Lord Captain stepped away from the servitors. Oh, presence held their breath. His Lordship um, gestured for his engine seer to study them. The engine seer prime slowly waded into the motionless ranks of the servitors, peering into their faces and checking the readings. There was no haste in Pascal's actions. With mesmerizing diligence, he inspected every single unit in his path. His binaric prayers were to his companion. Uh, his binaric com prayers were his companions in this investigation. 
The examination confirmed the technomats' initial hypothesis. The servitor's souls, or rather, the souls of the people they once were, had awakened. Not yet fully conscious of their past and presence, these half-machines could nonetheless feel primitive emotions and sensations such as fear and pain. This undesirable consequence of shoddily performed lobotomy is most rarely observed, and yet for some reason it had occurred in every single one of the servitors gathered in the bay. Um... Demanded a report on the defective unit status from the Technomats. Technomats' long-winded detailed report could have been summarized in a single key point. Despite the servitor's abnormal behavior, they were still capable of carrying out tasks, and therefore, the circumstances did not call for their termination. All right, Lord Abner did what? He turned to me to announce his decision. Um... I should have had one of them, just one of them disassembled. I forgot. Um, I, I read it initially as all of them being disassembled, and I didn't read it till correctly till it was already clicking. All right. His lordship turned to me with unwavering resolve, and it was the confidence that, uh, that wrenched me out of the nightmare stupor that had me tensely observing the scene unfolding before me. Uh, we're going to go iconoclast. We're there. Um, we, can, we can dispose of them so their souls can be released. We can send them back to their toils they told before. We can destroy them. Or we can just lead them, leave them to their work. I mean, those tend to be the same thing. But we'll go ic iconoclast, right? That's our that's our goal anyway. Lord Captain's command was executed post haste. All defective units were incinerated in furnaces, and the remains were expelled into the void. The crew was provided with replacement servitors and soon forgot all about the destroyed unit's peculiarities. Yet this incident haunts my memories to this day. With the fate of the defective ser defective servitors decided, nothing can now distract the Lord Captain from his mission. I don't think we'll end that one there. Uh, a lot of reading, a lot of talking this time, but hopefully some good tips at the beginning. Um, we'll see. Some stuff I had I figured out on, you know, as I've been playing. Uh, and we'll be back next time. So as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down. And we will see you next time. Cheers.